Hi, folks. Again, thanks for joining us. Uh, do me a favor. Can somebody just give me a thumbs up in the chat box that you hear me okay and that you see the investing in a volatile market screen? I want to make sure we're on the same page and uh, get you started here. I hear you. I see you. Thumbs up. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Now, if you have a question during the program, go to the chat box and um, Stephanie will be monitoring the chat box and she'll give me those questions at the end of the program and we'll make sure we'll get all your questions answered. All right. So I'm going to minimize this. Perfect. Close that. All right. Here we go. Um, today, December 8th, 2021, our 530 program of investing in a volatile market with Howard Capital Management. Uh, now, first, uh, always, we want to cover the, uh, the, 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 the fine print, right? Um, Madison Avenue Securities, that's my broker dealer. They oversee what I do. Uh, they don't give legal advice. Uh, they don't give accounting advice, uh, taxes advice. No, they, they just are there to monitor to make sure I'm doing the right thing for you because I am a fiduciary. Uh, the right, I'm going to make sure that we're taking care of you before we take care of us. Uh, so with that being said, I'd like to share our first um, slide here is a short video. Please welcome executives and team members of Power Capital Management in celebration of their HCM Defender Index ETF listing. On the occasion, Dan Tower's CEO and portfolio manager will bring the closing bell. That's a way to start a program, right? Very nice. All right. Now, I'm going to pause that. Um, if you, now this is Howard Capital. I want to, I want to introduce somebody now. Uh, Steve, Steve Albritton from Howard Capital. Uh, we don't have Vance today, but we got the guy right behind uh, Vance there, right in the middle. Steve, uh, Steve, welcome to the program. And thank you for participating uh, in this uh, webinar. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, now, Steve, you're in uh, Clearwater, the St. Pete area. That's correct. Nice. And and you're from you're originally from there. You're born there. Born and raised in uh, Clearwater. I'm actually a fifth generation Floridian on my dad's side. So don't let the background fool you. I'm not from New York. I'm from Florida. <laughs> That's unique. That's unique. Yeah. Now tell us, uh, you got to you get to go to New York. You get to ring the bell there. That's got to be exciting. Very cool. I got the call a couple of days before it um, from Vance himself, and he said, hey, you want to go to New York in two days? And without equivocation, I said, absolutely. So my wife and I booked tickets and got up there and joined the, the group on the podium there. It was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Never forget it. It was awesome. Very nice. So um, just give a, little, give a little heads up of today's program. Uh, we're going to cover a couple things. So in the beginning, uh, I'm going to have uh, Steve, bring us up to where we're at, wh how we got to here from uh, the first three quarters of the year. So we got to, you know, to go forward, we need to look back to see where we've been and how we got to here. And then what we'll cover is uh, a little bit of uh, where do we see uh, going uh, in, the, in the future. And then we want to cover some uh, results. Uh, we'll go over some Morningstar reports. And then the best part of this today is I want to go through some comparatives. What other people, uh, other money managers are returning there to clients compared to what Vance Howard and Howard Capital is doing. So uh, to start us off, um, uh, Steve, you want to take over the highlights of the uh, up to the third quarter for the year? Absolutely. Absolutely. So every quarter, Howard Capital puts out um, what we call quarterly reviews. Um, of course, the, the most current one is for quarter three, which of course ended September 30th. We're already into December, mid-December, I know. So this might be a little dated information, but it's still important to know where we came from, like Kevin said. So going to kind of quickly set the stage for, you know, some of the economic data. I'm going to try to keep it somewhat interesting uh, and keep it moving. So 
Let, let's talk about the highlights of quarter three. Markets definitely started strong, but uh, fell victim to what we call the September effect. I wanted to just quickly cover what the September effect is. It's historic, historically, it's been, it's the worst month in the market, in the broad uh, equity market, stock market. Couple of reasons for that, a lot of mutual funds in their fiscal year in September, at the end of September. So they do a lot of what they call window dressing. They're gonna sell positions that are maybe lost positions or even ones that have profited. So, so there's some selling activity there that leads to you know, downward pressure on prices. Um, there was a lot of concern. I know y'all watch the news about uh, you know, the, the massive amounts of dollars uh, leaving Washington, uh, you know, the three point, that should be trillion, by the way, it says 3.5 B, it should be a T on, on that number. But that had a lot of concerns, you know, that, that talk about the, uh, the impact of the, uh, you know, the, the, the various programs that were introduced uh, third quarter. We had higher than expected inflation forecasts. I know everybody's uh, familiar with that. If you've been to the gas pump recently or the grocery store, so the um, prospect of increasing interest rates, uh, bond yields skyrocketing, and bond prices uh, spiraling down. You know, bonds are a seesaw. So when prices go up, yields go down. Let's look at the equity markets review. Quarter three started very, very strong, all-time highs. Financial services and technology we were invested in and, and benefited greatly. Uh, then came along that uh, Evergrande collapse in China. Our friends in China uh, uh, led to some downward pressure on the uh, market with that uh, real estate giant collapsing uh, in, in September. Actually, in September, the stock market dipped 5%, and it shocked a lot of people because we hadn't had a, a pullback like that in a long time. Important to know, though, folks, a 5% drawdown is typically typically will happen every seven months in the stock market. So people shouldn't be freaked out when we have a 5% pull down. Um, as far as where we were concerned, our investments in industrials and energies uh, definitely took the worst hit out of all of our positions. Luckily, we didn't have a heavy position in those two sectors. Quickly on the bonds, the bond market review, 10-year treasury stood at 1.48. Uh, that's you know, historically a pretty low yield on the 10 year. Uh, again, the Fed is predicting rising inflations, bond prices falling, yields rising. So that led to that, uh, you know, kind of lower than normal yield. We do expect at Howard Capital that high yield bonds and treasury inf uh, inflation protected securities, they call them TIPS, treasury inflation protected securities, uh, we expect those to end the year very positively, those two, those two bond classes. And we expect U.S. Tre treasuries are going to have their worst year in a long time. It's just the nature of the game. As far as inflation, jobs, and consumer confidence, it was a very topsy-turvy uh, quarter for, for job performance. July had 935,000. August only added 235,000. They expected 720. So that was a little bit of hit to the market. Uh, uh, there's still some way to go. It's important uh, to know before restoring those employment numbers that were there before the pandemic. We got a little ways to go, but we're on our way. Uh, as far as the consumer price index, the CPI, which we hear about every day, it stayed above 100, which is pretty healthy, but it, it did reflect a little lowering, a little heightened consumer concern over prices. Lastly, our last category, dollar, the dollar index and commodities. The dollar rose about 2% uh, in, in the third quarter. Uh, the commodity index uh, is currently witnessing its highest growth in a long time, since 1979. Uh, we've got a year to date, and this is from a couple of months ago, 29.1 on that index. It's a very high number. Oil, you might know crude oil gained a lot in September. Uh, Back then, it was at 75 uh, bucks a barrel. Uh, we do expect, like all folks do, this time of year, a seasonal uptick in oil uh, over the next several months as we enter winter. So that's a very, very quick, broad, you know, plain language, hopefully, uh, overview of the market. Uh, we so go to the next slide, Kevin. That's where we came from. Yep.
Yeah. Uh, but before we get to your answer of where we're headed to, uh, let's uh, let's uh, do a poll. Uh, poll number one today. Um, why is it saying the chair? Hold on two seconds to close that. Poll, because we were playing with it earlier. <laughs> and it's saying share results. I want to, I don't want to. Uh, that's sharing results. I want to read. Well, hold on. Sorry about that, folks. We were playing with it early. I want to get to your question. It's, I don't think it's allowing them to participate because we played with it. All right. My bad. All right. Um, in the chat box, you can tell me, where do you feel uh, the market is heading in the next six months? Do you think the market's going to go up? Do you think it's going to go down? Uh, and the second question is, how do you feel about inflation? Uh, are you worried about inflation or are you not concerned about it? So put those two answers in the chat box. You, you just say up or down or worried or not, not concerned. Um, and uh, I'm sorry, we, uh, we were, I, forget, I didn't realize that Zoom doesn't let you uh, go back to the question. We, had, we went through a practice run and we didn't have anybody to answer. So uh, I'm gonna stop sharing that. I can't share the results because uh, you didn't participate on the on the quiz. That's our bad. Sorry. So right now, uh, looking in the uh, in the chat, I see the again not not worried, not concerned. I like that. But I hear some ups, ups, ups. Very nice. I got it down there, and I got it down. Inflation scares me. All right. So with that being said, uh, we'll, uh, we'll 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 go ahead and with the next slide. Uh, and for your participation. Um, Right now, Stephanie will enter into the chat box uh, to download. Uh, Howard Capital Management has put out the Biden administration tax legislation ebook. Uh, so look for that in the chat uh, box. You could download the link um, and, and get that just for your participation and our little mix up there. Sorry. All right, Steve, tell us where we're headed. Uh, I lost. I lost you on your, on your mic. There, I'm unmuted. There you there go. We go. So there we go. So this is a chart of three different um, indices. We'll we'll call them uh, the the GDP growth, which is the dark black line. You got a light green line. CPI, Consumer Price Index Change, and unemployment is the third line. And you can see all of them are on a downward trend. The good news is these. You can consider these numbers at the end kind of reverting to the mean. Those are pretty average numbers. We've been a little higher in the past with the CPI and real GDP growth as a result of the post-pandemic pent-up demand. We see the, these three you know, reverting to the mean over the next year or so. Now, the Fed, you've probably heard the Fed is going to begin tapering. A lot of folks don't understand what that means. It's pretty simple. They are going to stop uh, selling, or excuse me, they're going to stop buying uh, treasuries and government bonds. And that puts less money in circulation in the U.S. economy. So the idea is when the economy is going full steam and interest rates are very low and uh, lower than normal, you want to pull back on the money supply to slightly increase the inflation, the, uh, the uh, interest rates. And that's what the Fed plans to do over the next six months, tapering off its asset purchases starting last month and continuing into the middle of 2022. That's going to cause a little bit of uh, a rise in interest rates, which we're predicting. We see another uh, kind of troubling uh, thing on the horizon. A lot of companies are entering into speculative grade debt. They're running up their debt. A lot of these companies uh, you know, may not have with the interest rates increasing the capacity to you know, service that debt. So that has us a little bit concerned. Uh, point is now though, third bullet there, many businesses and trade routes are now functioning at full capacity. It's just the supply chain, some of the supply chain, as you've heard in the news, there's still some bugs there. We expect them to work out in the next five to six months. So uh, let's just quickly talk about the review for the quarterly review and our outlook. Uh, the first point is sell-offs we experienced in September. They were much needed. 
You might not want to hear that from a money manager, but that's the nature of the business. The stock market is kind of like a marathon runner. And Vance Howard, our founder and CEO, says, look, even marathon runners need to take a break and stop and have a drink of water. Well, that's what the market does occasionally. And it's a good time for us, as long as our byline is positive, to go in and purchase additional securities that are on sale. So, and that's what we've done. Uh, we called, we actually called for additioning, additional selling pressure at the end of the quarter before the third quarter. You know, we pretty much had a nice straight up market since the November, 2020. So that the sell-off was not a surprise to us at all. Again, the byline is positive. We continue to monitor it closely. As long as it's positive, we're gonna buy what's, we're gonna do what's called buying on the dip. And that's what we're doing. Uh, to close out the HCM byline, as you all have heard from Kevin over and over probably, it takes the emotion out of investment making, decision making uh, for us. It is strictly emotionless. It is quantitative, meaning it's math based. And luckily it's been repeatable over the last 20 years that it's been in existence. So it doesn't predict the market, just a little, uh, little uh, review here very quickly. It does not predict the market. It's, it's an intermediate term trend follower. That's what this algorithm does. It tells us what is actually taking place within the markets and what trends are happening right now. Uh, again, we had indicated that we were gonna have a sloppy and volatile uh, third quarter. Certainly has been that, you know, the last, uh, you know, several weeks, but we do expect it to stabilize and move higher by year end, which we're almost there. And Vance Howard has been calling for this. There's my little Santa Claus, <laughs> uh, indicative of hopefully a Santa Claus rally, uh, you know, coming in these last few weeks of, uh, of uh, 2021. Okay. Um, get into uh, the computer trading. Um, now that Mark, you know, because you have that algorithm and you did mention the byline. So uh, right now, if you don't mind, uh, Stephanie will uh, enter a link to download the byline brochure. Uh, going back to 2002, it was formed in 1997 by Vance Howard. Uh, and again, this is not day trading. Uh, this is more uh, methodical. Uh, you know, every three or four years, it, you need to, you know, step aside the market. And that's what Howard Capital has been able to do uh, in, in, their, in, in their history. So it uh, doesn't guarantee future results, but uh, when it's math, uh, math wins, right? So if you want that brochure, and by the way, the brochure itself, it's, it's, it's a three uh, fold. So in the front one's landscape, the second one, uh, the, I should say the first page is, is portrait and this inside is landscape. Um, if you have a difficulty downloading it um, because it goes uh, sideways, go ahead and put byline in the chat box and I'll have uh, Stephanie uh, send you out a brochure to your address of record and we'll get you covered there. Okay, Steve? Yeah, uh, I was going to go back to the byline chart real quick, Kevin. Yep. Um, I just want to point out, you said it perfectly, Kevin. This is not day trading. You know, people hear that we're a tactical manager and we go to cash and they think we're trying to find a new market bottom and a new market top and react to those. That's not the way this byline works. As Kevin said, very methodical, very pragmatic. It's based on intermediate term trends and monitors basically the health of the overall stock market. I want to point out, and, and I know Kevin's explained this chart to most of you, you see the red dots and the green dots. That indicates where we sold and took a cash position for safety for our investors. The green indicates when we got back in. This is over a 20 plus year period. And I want to point out, there are periods where we're not moving. We're staying invested. And so that kind of proves we're not day trading, where there's, this is a four year period right here between 2011 and 2015, where we uh, stayed invested. And uh, I'll, I'll close with this as far as the byline discussion. Don't expect the byline to trigger and go to cash during a normal correction. Corrections, as I mentioned before, are natural, normal events in the market. And as long as our byline has, is positive, and it will, it usually stays positive during a correction, it's when that correction starts to turn into something much worse. 
And that's when the byline triggers and protects you know, your capital. So a uh, great story to tell. And uh, most folks like seeing a money manager that actually does something when the market is sick. And so that's what we do. We go to cash and try to protect those big downturns. So Kevin? Nice. Yep. Uh, you know, it's a totally different market now. Um, you're not competing against the guy next door uh, when you're buying stock. You're competing against computers. 80 plus percent of the trades done out in the market now are computer driven. And so trends like the ones we're following have become very shortened, uh, even compared to five years ago. Uh, our byline, by the way, is dynamic. We, 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 uh, it's dynamic. We've changed it, slightly modified it over the years to keep up with the changing market. That's a question we get asked a lot. Is it the same byline you were using 30, 20 years ago? No, it's been tweaked to keep up with the, uh, the speed of the market. Let's uh, see if the volume will play on this one here. Let's bring in Vance Howard, Howard Capital Management. Shoot. Can you hear me now? I'm sorry. Yeah, I got you, Steve. Okay, I'm so sorry. I thought something happened, but anyway, 80 to 85% of the trading in the market is now done by machine. So when you're, you're not competing with your neighbor anymore, you're competing with machines. So that byline, uh, you know, if you don't have a money manager that doesn't have an algorithm and a math generated system, we feel like you're at a disadvantage uh, to the rest of the investing world. And the byline's done a great job in uh, keeping our uh, investors on the on the right side of the market. So, all right, yeah, all right, all right. Here we go. Howard Capital Management CEO. Are you surprised about this market action? One single case and investors turn tail? No, not, not at all. I mean, we knew it was going to happen. We knew a case would show up over here. We knew that there would be some volatility in this market. But, you know, like I said, the trend of the market is still up. It's still very strong. Liz, um, I'd be buying on this dip. Take the emotion out of the equation. We've seen this happen time and time again since uh, you know, April of 2020. I mean, every time we've had any type of a, a news event with COVID, which is basically every single day, um, you're going to see a little bit of a pullback. But all these pullback lives have been shorter lived and they've been shallower so they've, they've all been buying opportunities and we've been buying into each and every one so take the emotion out of the equation trade what actually is happening the market is still in an uptrend and i think we're going to end up having a pretty good month okay what are you buying today well you know i'm, I'm like you can buy the cues you can buy you know there's a lot of good things i love the things apple's looking good microsoft is looking good there's so many great stocks out there mm -hmm. we've been really buying a lot of the uh, the uh, uh, semiconductor index and that's been a big winner for us especially the last you know 90 days there's so many opportunities out there, and these sellouts create even more opportunity. Okay, and you like the SOX, which of course is the iShare Semiconductor Exchange Traded Fund that has a lot of the top names in this basket. Uh, and as we watch the, the price action in the SOX, if we can put that up at the moment, here it goes. We are down just about $2 at the moment or half a percent. So maybe other people like your idea as well. Why not something like the airlines? We know that people are going to fly on Delta <laughs> again at some point. And right now we've got Delta, American, United Airlines all moving lower. And, and yet you're looking into semis. Is there something in particular that you like and, and others that you avoid? Well, we're, we're mathematically driven, Liz. You know that. We're, quanti we're quantitative shop. So the math is putting us in, in the, in the, uh, the semiconductor okay. index. The math is not putting us in airlines right now. And that's not to say that a month from now or two months it won't. But man, we've been banging it away on the semiconductors and just we're having a heck of a good year. Vance, I love it. And you are because you got $4 billion in assets under management and climbing. We hope that you'll join us once again soon. And we do have uh, quite a day that we are wrapping up with just 30 seconds before the close of the markets. So that was uh, Vance Howard recently uh, on TV. He's always on the different shows. Oh, let me start to play there again. Um, Steve, I mean, he's... Vance is always on. The one answer I love that when people are asking me is like, well, the byline didn't direct us there. Uh, so, you know, I, I love that it's tactical that he's able to, uh, you know, stay where the winners are. Exactly. 
we actually have, we actually have, and can you hear me? <laughs> All good, can you hear me? Good. We yeah. actually have two systems, Kevin. We've got the byline, which is designed to protect capital in the event of a big market drawdown. And then we have our investment system, which tells us which parts of the market are performing the best right now. Not a month from now, not two months from now. What's making money now? And our system has put us pretty successfully over the, you know, over the time we've been in business into the right sectors of the market to reward our investors. That's been a big, a big boon with Howard Capital. Okay. Um, let's get through the computer trading, enough of computer trading, right? Almost right. Uh, yeah. I, 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 I'm going to get to the good stuff here. There you go. <laughs> uh, so, um, we'll talk about their, okay. So this, again, this is all on the byline right now being, uh, math and a lot of these, you know, again, the byline it's, it's, you know, it's secret. It's a secret sauce. No one knows all the indicators. Uh, Howard Capital does not share uh, how they the byline is built up, but he does he has shared it. It has to have new highs to new lows, PE ratios, moving day averages, all these indicators that make up the byline, uh, the secret sauce. So uh, again, that byline brochure uh, explains a lot of that as well, and uh, you can have that uh, sent out to you if you write byline in in the chat. So let's go over the the three mutual funds that Howard has and uh, the two ETFs. Um, uh, starting with the dividend income sector A. Right. So this is one of our three uh, retail mutual funds that we have available. We use, and I got I to gotta point this out. I always say we eat our own cooking. So when you open an account with Howard, it's likely that you're going to hold one or two of our, or maybe even three of our own mutual funds and maybe some of our ETFs, which we'll talk about in a minute along with other outside uh, companies, mutual funds and ETFs. We're not a strictly proprietary company. So it's gonna be a mix of a lot of different funds and ETFs, but we do like our own, our own funds. There's a reason we like them. Uh, this is the Dividend Sector Plus. We use it in our models, uh, many of our investment models that Kevin has access to. Uh, it's a, uh, oh, I think we went to, did we go to a different slide? There you go. Dividend it is a five-star fund. Uh, it's the highest Morningstar rating uh, possible by Morningstar. It is a large cap, meaning it's mainly S&P 500 companies that you know and recognize that are paying really good dividends and have a good dividend momentum over time. Very popular. I call it a core account. It's suitable for I'm going to say 99% of the investors out there because it's large cap companies that are paying a dividend. Very, very solid mutual fund. Nice. We move on to our tactical growth. This is our, what I call our flagship mutual fund. Uh, it's, um, it's really the best representation of how Howard Capital manages money. Why do I say that? because this is what's called an unconstrained mutual fund. We can go anywhere with this fund, large cap, small cap, mid cap. We can hone in on a certain sector or a asset class. So this is full use of that investment system that I talked about uh, you know, a, a couple of minutes ago. And again, a great fund. I mean, you're, if you look at the performance of this fund, you know, you're doubling your money uh, on a regular basis with this fund. I don't have the math in front of me, but it's it's had a it's done a great job over its six year, five and a half year history. And again, uh, it is uh, it is five star. So here's the HCM Income Plus. This is our third mutual fund, our final mutual fund. This is not a bond fund. Don't let the name fool you. Anything that has a yield can go in this mutual fund, including bonds. So anything that pays any sort of return or yield or dividend can go in this fund. We call it a multi-income fund. And uh, we like that. We, like, we don't like being handcuffed to be able to only hold bonds. That's why we've opened it up. This thing can hold high dividend equities. It can hold real estate if, if, if need be. It's a very, very good good multi-income fund, okay? And now the, uh, the ETFs? Yep, the ETFs, if we go to our two ETFs, uh, 
ETFs are different than mutual funds in that they trade during the day, just like a stock. So they're a little more liquid than a mutual fund. You have to wait to the end of the day to find out what your mutual fund is valued at, and then you can sell it or buy it. ETFs, not, not the case. This is our Defender 100 ETF. It represents the NASDAQ 100 index, which are large cap tech companies. Again, performance-wise, even though they've only got a couple of years under their belt, our ETFs have done phenomenal in performance. And Kevin can show you, show you those numbers. And so that's our Defender 100. Go ahead, Kevin. And this is why you were in, in uh, celebrating the anniversary? That is correct. Uh, you know, we were supposed to ring the bell on Wall Street uh, back in January of 2020. We all know what happened <laughs> in January 2020. So COVID wiped that out. Uh, luckily, we stayed on it and uh, celebrated these two ETFs uh, yeah, just recently on the stock exchange. This is our Defender 500. It represents the S&P 500. And what I should have said is everything we have, our mutual funds, our ETFs, our strategies that Kevin can put you in, all have that byline. That's our differentiator. These ETFs can go to 100% cash. And guess what? They did back in March of uh, 2020 when the market took that dip. These things went to cash, protected principal. We got back in in April and have been pedal to the metal ever since. And these are really, really solid ETFs to own. Mm -hmm. Kevin can give you more information on the performance. You see that in the byline brochure as well. Yep. All right, so let's get into the, the, the SMA, the portfolios, the account set. Uh, and what I'm looking for is the, the comparatives of what other, everyone else is doing. Uh, so let's start off with a new uh, portfolio. Uh, and, uh, you know, again, for, uh, I would say, the more conservative client, uh, you want Steady Eddie. Uh, it's over 10 years of returns. This is the horizon income. Uh, tell us a little bit about this. Yep, it's uh, by far, it's our most conservative portfolio, portfolio, meaning it's gonna have less volatility up and down movement than some of our other models. Um, again, you know, this is a multi-income strategy, not just bonds, not just fixed income. Again, it can hold some high dividend equities. It can hold anything that's, that has a yield. And you can see since inception, uh, you know, it's average net of fees, uh, about 6.5%, 6.37. Year to date, it's up almost 8. And like Kevin said, steady eddy, steady eddy, you know, no surprises. It's just had a real consistent return, you know, since its inception in 2009. So a, a very, very solid, uh, you know, conservative portfolio. In, in the comparatives here, I mean, you look like year to date, whereas the average uh, you know, you know, comparable to the horizon income portfolio where they're up three and a half percent on, on, you know, pretty conservative, uh, fund, but this fund is up seven, uh, over seven, uh, you know, and it's been consistent like that because you look at the, the, uh, the sense inception, you talk about it over 6% and that's net of the fee, uh, that you're getting 6%, 6.37. Uh, you got that byline for the protection but yet you're outpacing everyone else uh, by almost two, two point uh, two and a quarter, uh, where they're only getting four percent on their money, which is right where, or right maybe just staying ahead of inflation. It's it's not enough. Uh, so uh, you'd like to use this account for you know consi consistency uh, and conservativeness, uh, uh, the, the approach of going forward. So um, again, now the the platforms that we use, Axos, Pershing Advisors, TD Ameritrade. Uh, nationwide, uh, you know, again, this, uh, they, the minimum per portfolio is $25,000. And again, this allows you to diversify between these portfolios. And we're going to mention, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, four today, five today, five. We'll five. mention five different portfolios. Uh, so again, this is uh, introducing a, a, the, mo the most conservative program that we'll talk about. Uh, the next one is is my favorite uh, <laughs> dividend income balance. I I every relationship I start I start with dividend income balance. Now there is three different kind of like speeds. Uh, they've got conservative balance and growth, and it's all about exposure to equities. Uh, so they got the same portfolio. Just if it's a growth model, it's more exposure to the equity side. If it's a conservative model, less exposure. 
Uh, but again, this account uh, has been consistent for my clients. We always talk about trying to get that eight to 10% net return. Uh, and the numbers here are just, uh, you're blowing me out of the water. Whereas the, again, the dividend income average portfolio right now is up 9% for the year, but this portfolio is up 22 net of that fee. Uh, tell us why. why, why, why is Vance outperforming everybody? Well, it's, uh, we actually can hold, uh, this, this portfolio is mainly consisting of large cap, like I said, S&P 500 companies that are paying a dividend consistently or that are growing their dividend. So our systems are leading us to the best big companies that are solid, you know, have good balance sheets that are paying that good dividend. And we're, instead of buying all the dividend payers in an ETF, we're focusing in on only the ones that are solid and, and uh, producing the, the highest dividends. Again, this has the byline stitched into it. So if we get another, you know, 2008 or another COVID drawdown, like spring of 2020, this can go up to 100% cash, uh, despite those great numbers you're seeing. Yeah, we want to protect again, capital, right? It, it, it's my go-to. Yeah. Uh, everyone knows that. Everyone that has a Howard account, uh, you know, if I'm going to put my best foot forward, I, I the way I, I talk about this is the portfolio is, you know, is income-based, income-producing dividend stocks. You know, quarterly, those dividends come in. And if the market's kind of rough, it's going to replenish the volatility. And if the market's up, it's icing on their cake. And yep. again, after three months, six months, you, you just really let this thing go. So pretty consistent with this story. Uh, I always start with dividend income uh, as, as a great uh, foot, first foot forward. All right. So let's uh, ALP growth. Now, this is uh, what, what do you call it? The, the, catal the catalyst Cadillac. What do you call it? The benchmark. I call it the flagship you know, flagship. portfolio at Howard. It goes back to October of, of 2002. And by the way, we don't back test. When, when we show numbers, Kevin, you know this, when we show numbers, it's always net of fees and it's always based on real client accounts. A lot of other companies back test their performance. And, and what that means is it's kind of like preseason football, it doesn't count. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it, 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 it's, it, it's formulas based on their formula that you're using. Data. How would this have done to 20 years ago? Well, you know, we don't do that. These are real the client accounts. The comparatives yep. on this portfolio, again, it's going to be a little bit more uh, aggressive, a little bit more volatility. Uh, and the comparative, if you look at the, the three and five year, uh, you're, you're making five, seven percent. But Howard's a comparative, you're taking 18, 20 percent returns. Uh, it's triple uh, the, the, the numbers of the average uh, portfolio breakup uh, between the, again, the Barclays, the S&P and the, and the hedge fund index. Uh, this portfolio is consistently outperforming uh, and it has the byline uh, laid in there. So uh, that byline, again, when we saw it last year and you were on the sideline and the market was down 30% in March, uh, you know, you were down a little bit, but when the market was positive uh, a month later, the byline kicked in as positive and has been positive ever since. Again, I always stress, it's not day trading. You know, this byline only really kicks probably average uh, two, three, you know, sometimes four years, but it, it's, it's where that uh, you're going to be consistent and let the, you know, let the money run when it's going good and go to the sideline and when it's bad. So it's, it's been definitely consistent. I think the byline has a great uh, history. Uh, again, doesn't predict the future, but uh, it's, it's definitely consistent. And uh, we'll go on to the, uh, the ETF uh, model, uh, ILP, IP, ILP ETF. Um, I do use this some, um, again, to a little bit of diversification. Uh, Steve, tell me uh, about the, the, the makeup of ETFs. Sure. So, and I'll go back very quickly to the ALP. You don't have to go back to it, Kevin, but I will. I, I wanted to say <laughs> we like acronyms at Howard Capital. ALP, by the way, stands for Active Lifestyle Portfolio. If you go to the ILP ETF slide now, there's another acronym. That's Investor Lifestyle Portfolio, just to clarify. But this portfolio consists of only ETFs. And it's a great blend with some of our other models that hold only mutual funds, right? ETFs typically have a lower expense ratio. So the internal expenses are going to be lower, typically. 
Uh, and uh, again, uh, as Kevin said, there are uh, actually three different what I call flavors in this port. The same portfolio, but it's got a conservative, it's got a, a balanced, and it's got a, a growth model uh, associated with it. So depending on your risk tolerance, you'll go in one of those models. But again, all ETFs, uh, by the way, ETFs typically do not generate capital gains at the end of the year like mutual funds do. I won't explain why, but it's part of their internal working. So for after-tax accounts, for those of you that are concerned about taxes, you get that 1099 for the, from those mutual funds at the end of the year that everybody loves, especially when the fund's been down and you get a tax bill for it. That happens a lot. ETFs don't produce that capital gain. So that's a that's a real advantage. Uh, uh, Steve, thanks for bringing up the the, the speeds here of that uh, three speeds. But going back to ALP growth, you have four speeds, do you not? We do. We've got an aggressive version of that, which is a one hundred percent equity version, uh, as opposed to the conservative, which is going to be more, you know, forty five, uh, whatever, uh, much more, <laughs> much less equities in the in the portfolio. Uh, in the conservative. Okay. And yep. last portfolio, oh. uh -oh, ultra <laughs> aggressive. Now, yeah. in the past, uh, you had to have a half a million dollars of, uh, of money with Howard to even look at this portfolio. And, and we're looking at it. Um, tell, <laughs> tell, me, tell me a little bit about ultra aggressive and, and why would we show this to people? Well, uh, you know, this is the portfolio that I call, you know, the swing for the fences Babe Ruth portfolio, because that's what we're trying to do with this portfolio. We are going all out. Uh, full disclosure, we're using leverage. We're buying leveraged ETFs uh, to, uh, to turbocharge the upside in, in this portfolio. Uh, again, it has the byline, and that's the real dif differentiator between this and other super aggressive portfolios. We, this portfolio can go up to 100% cash. It was about 70% cash, 75% cash back in our last move that the byline made, which was back in March of 2020. But look at the numbers. I mean, they're, they're just unbelievable. I mean, it did last year or 2020, it did 81.2 net of fees. So far this year, we're up over 43%. The worst year annually it's ever had is down 15. And, uh, you know, that may seem like a, a, a big downturn, but for an ultra aggressive, that is not a big downturn at all. It's averaged since inception, just under 30%. You know, so if you know the rule of 72, you know, you're doubling your money with this portfolio. And I'm not guaranteeing anything, obviously, but historically, you've doubled your money every two to three years with this portfolio. So. It's very rare for a defensive minded manager like Howard to have an ultra aggressive portfolio. And we're very, very proud of this, uh, of this model. So. Nice, crazy numbers. Yeah, crazy. Sure. Numbers. <laughs> I'm going to be hearing it on this one. Yeah. Uh, but again, that's only for gamblers. If you, again, you, this is going to be, uh, you know, you, you're not going to look at it every day because you're going to lose sleep. Uh, okay. It's got some big swings in it uh, and, and, but again, if you're swinging for the fence, you're gonna strike out a lot, right? Uh, the Babe Ruth, uh, you know, number one uh, strikeout king there. So uh, that, that's all the portfolios. So I'd like to uh, see if we could, maybe if this will work one more time, let's see if we add the poll here. Uh, nope, it's not letting us. Uh, it's, it was to, uh, which way do you think the market is heading? No, it's, it's number two, hold on. Poll number two. Hey, it's going to work. All right. So All right. now that you heard from the expert, uh, Steve and Howard Capital, uh, do you feel you need some help? Well, if you need it right away or you need it early next year, a lot of people are going to push past the, the holidays or you don't need help or you know somebody that does need help, uh, you know, go ahead and, 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 and share that. Uh, and we'll definitely, uh, you know, uh, circle back and, and get everybody uh, on the same page here. All right, um, we're gonna open up a little bit longer. I've got 40% uh, participation, oh, six, all right. Oh, you guys are really climbing in. Okay, awesome participation, thank you guys. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and shut that down. I'm gonna end the poll, perfect. Uh, so what I would tell you to do, because I think for time we're at 45 minutes, perfect. Uh, so I'm just gonna cover a couple things. 
Uh, if you need to see me right now, which some of you did say you need help, uh, you could use this uh, QR code on the screen and that has access to my calendar. You could schedule a quick call with Kevin. You could schedule a Zoom meeting or like this where we could share uh, statements and stuff or you could set a meeting in my office. We are open. We do wear masks during meetings. Uh, the office is cleaned all the time. Uh, there is a protocol there. We only see so many people per day. Uh, it's not like an open door policy anymore. Uh, so again, if you want to schedule a call, uh, you could use that, uh, that QR code on the screen right now. And let's see, uh, questions. If you have any questions, uh, throw them in the chat box. Uh, okay, so I got a couple there. All right, so uh, the first question is, what is the minimum? Uh, the minimum per portfolio is $25,000 on any of the platforms that Howard has. Uh, good question. Let's see, any other questions here? All right, so please explain. My understanding that the, the one... All right, so Steve, I'll, I'll ask the question and you answer this. It says, please explain, it's my understanding that uh, that when one investment is in the buy line, the money is 100% invested, yet you say buy, buy in the dip. So if our money is all invested, how does it newly invest, uh, take advantage of the dip? So how do you take advantage of the dip when, when Howard, uh, Vance Howard comes out and says, listen, the, the market's going to be volatile, we're buying on the dips? Well, uh we're going to, for example, I mean, Vance in that video, if you heard it, Vance talked about us liking the semiconductor uh, index and that we bought that semiconductor index. We, we bought that when the semiconductor index was low. And after we bought it, not immediately after it, it, it rose up. Uh, as far as, you know, how do you buy additional stuff in client accounts? Remember, there's always a cash sliver in your account, usually two to 3%. So we can use some of that cash to buy additional purchases or bolster the existing positions that you have in your account by buying more of that asset class that is now dipped down. Um, that, that's, that's what we do. We'll, we'll identify the sectors of the market that, um, that are performing best and we'll, despite if it's a market drawdown, uh, before the buy line has signaled, that's important. We're not going to buy anything after the buy line signals. We're going to, there's usually two signals. First signal, we go up to 50% cash. Second signal, up to 100%. But we're not buying anymore once that buy line, as long as that buy line stays positive and we see a compelling value, we're going to add that position or bolster that existing position in our client accounts. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh, one last question for time because I'm over. Yeah. You know how how people like people know I like to be very methodical. If the GOP, I got a political question here. If oh, the boy. GOP takes control in 2022, how do you see the market? How would the market fare? Uh, we, uh, I got to I got to be honest. We we don't opine on political stances. Um, and um, that report that that you're offering, the Biden tax legislation report, you want to read that. You want to read it. Um, it's not politically slanted one side or the other. But I, the important thing to lay out here, and I know I'm, I'm not answering the question. I apologize for that, but I'm not going to get into the political spheres. Uh, regardless of where the market goes, regardless of which party is in power, you know you've got a money manager in Howard. If the market starts to tank, we're going to put you to cash. If the market takes off, uh, you're going to, hopefully, if history is the lesson here, we're going to be outperforming our, most of our competitors just with our investment system. So either way, you're, you're covered with Howard. I know that's a great, great political, a political question. answer to a political question. How's that? All right. uh, <laughs> yeah, I would, I would say, uh, you know, stop watching the, the, the news and get to the good stuff. Yep. Uh, again, let's see, um, can you, can you send the report? Yes, we could send you the report um, as well. So go ahead and put um, uh, Biden tax uh, on the chat and we'll go ahead and get that brochure out to you. 
Uh, real quick, now there's not a lot of time left. Uh, if you haven't done your Roth conversion, and I call it Roth conversion season, this window is closing. You had to do it before December 31st. And now I know it's only December 8th, but a lot you're waiting on other companies to get pay, uh, paperwork done. Uh, and uh, it's, it's dragging. They're taking a lot longer year end. Uh, they're already uh, in Christmas mode or you know, uh, last week was Hanukkah. So uh, they're, they're on holiday. So it, the paperwork is being dragged. Uh, I did cut, start a couple already earlier this week, uh, but I can't promise them getting done. Uh, we, again, I'm a big believer in Roth uh, and I'm a big believer in Roth conversions. Uh, also uh, just some social things and we'll wrap it up here. Every Thursday, my wife is a yoga uh, certified yoga instructor. She does chair yoga over Zoom, a meeting like this, where you could participate uh, mentally. She does a little meditation. She does a little bit of stretching. No standing on your head. But also the best part is that last part, the savasana, where you get to kind of disconnect and really relax. Also, um, bingo. We play uh, Zoom bingo uh, once a month for real prizes. Uh, we play four or five games. Uh, we have fun with it. Again, it's just uh, to break up the day. We play it once a month. And last, let's see, oh, book club. This was just announced. And uh, we do a book club every month. The girls do, Stephanie, Vivian, and my wife, Diana. Uh, they've read uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. They, last year, they wrote, uh, they read seven books together. So what this is, is you, you buy the book, you download it, and you read it, and then you circle back and everybody talks about it uh, uh, over coffee. So they meet once a month. There is no book for the month of December. So this is actually January's pick. You, if you're a slow reader, you could start now, right? Uh, so, so it's Ellen Hildebrand, and the book is called Golden Girl. Uh, so that meeting is February 4th of 2022. It'll be over Zoom. Again, read the book, and you get to talk about it. It's fun stuff. Um, also, uh, to get up to date uh, with us, we're always dropping things, news stories, videos, on our social media platform. So if you're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, or YouTube, uh, this video, this recording, uh, once we get through compliance, will be on our YouTube page. Uh, and others in the past have been there. So again, if you're following us, uh, if you see our, 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 our post, like it, share it. We really appreciate that. And we really appreciate you. Steve, I want to thank you for your time today. Uh, folks, thank you so much for participating. That's all I've got. I think we're, we're good to go. So be safe and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you so much.